Okay, let's take a look at the second example, example two. Okay, that one was f of x equals one third x to the third minus 400x. Okay, and we did the first derivative on the other video, so that turned out to be x squared minus 400 for the first derivative, and the second derivative turned out to equal 2x. Okay. All right. All right, so let's kind of talk our way through this. We're going to be thinking about the guidelines and all. All right, so a couple things we know. Is the domain is all reals. This is a polynomial, so the domain is it's defined everywhere. So you have no vertical asymptotes. Okay, um, horizontal. You don't have horizontal asymptotes. It approaches, it, it has the leading term is one third x to the third. So the end behavior is going to be like y equals x to the third, which is basically this. Okay, so it's going to look like that, but there might be some turning happening there. So let me space that a little bit. Um, so the end behavior, which is where the horizontal asymptotes would have come from, is going to look like this because it's positive x to an odd power. All right. A um, couple other things I can see real quick. I can see that the y-intercept would be 0. I'll wait and do that later. Forget that. I'm going to go ahead and do my intercepts. So one of the things we want to do is find our critical points. So it's never undefined. So if there's a critical point, it's going to happen when um, f prime of x equals 0. So we're going to look at x squared minus 400 equaling 0. You can do this by factoring or square root method. I'm going to add 400 to both sides. Okay, then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. It's plus or minus 20. Okay, and then I'm going to do f double prime of x equals 0. That happens when 2x equals 0, which means x would equal 0. All right, so that's the possible inflection point. So positive or negative 20, possible maxes or mins, zero is a possible inflection point. All right, so I'm going to do the little checking the sign graph. So I'm going to think about this. And then over here, I'm going to check on either side of zero to determine the concavity. All right, so if I plug something in between negative 20 and 20, like 0, plug it into f prime, I'm going to get 0 squared minus 400, so it's going to be negative. Okay, and so that means that's what's going on between negative 20 and 20. When I pick something bigger than 20, like 25, then over here it's going to be positive. And since you're squaring over here, it's going to be positive. Okay, all right, and that's what f prime does. Well, what that means is that f is going to be increasing, decreasing, increasing. Not necessarily constant like that, but it's going to be rising, falling, rising. And so that makes negative 20, this one, makes that a max. And see, it makes that one a min. So we're going to wind up wanting to find the y-coordinate of that, negative 20, comma something, and then over here, positive 20, comma something, okay? All right, so that's when we would type that into our calculator, kind of work it out, and see what we're going to get when we do that. Let me find my calculator. A moment looking for that calculator. Yeah, let's grab my phone. All 
Okay. All right, so let's see, when we plug in the negative 20, we wind up getting 500. This turns out to be 5,333 and a third. When we plug in positive 20, we get a negative 5,333 and a third. Notice that those seem to be the same, just one positive, one negative. That's because there's symmetry going on here that we didn't really talk about. But do you see up here how this is cubed and this is to the first? So if I wound up doing f of negative x, I could have considered symmetry here. So if I do f of negative x, when I do... The negative in place of the x, when you cube it, becomes negative one-third x to the third. And then here, where you had a negative going in for the x, you wind up now with positive 400x. And this is really the opposite of f of x. So we will, we're going to find we have origin symmetry. And you'll see what that means when we get finished. Okay, all right, so we know what's going on with our F, um, with our first derivative. Now with our F double prime, I'm checking the left and the right of zero. When I plug zero in to the, the number to the left of zero in, I get a negative. When I plug a number to the right of zero in, I get a positive. So that means here, where it's negative, that means it's concave down. Where it's positive, that means it's concave up. So that means that this is an inflection point right here. And I'm going to need the y-coordinate of that. But when you go back to the original and you plug in a 0, you're just going to get 0. So there's an inflection point at 0, 0. Okay? So we already know a whole lot about the function. And we really can just go ahead and do a, a sketch right there. Okay. Um, but one more thing we might want to know are the intercepts. Okay. So if we want the y-intercept, we just plug in a zero into the function. And we're going to get zero. So that means zero, zero is the y-intercept. When we do the x-intercept, it helps to consider the, the factored form, um, which would be x. Well, let me just write it here. It's one-third x to the third minus 400x. Okay, that's the function. Okay, so the factored form of that, I could factor out the x, and I'd have one-third x to the third minus 400. Hmm. Okay, this is my last video. I'll, I'll do some more at school. I'll just go into a classroom and do it. My pen. And that's going to be only squared. Okay, oh, that worked good. Okay. So now I'm going to, I'm looking for x-intercepts, remember. So I'm looking for what causes that to equal zero. So it's going to happen at 0, which we already know that's a y-intercept. It's also an x-intercept. And then I need to set this one equal to 0. Okay. All right, when I do that, I can use the square root property. So I, I might want to go ahead and get 400 to the other side by adding it. Multiply by 3 to get the 1,200. And then when I take the square root, don't forget there's two of them. Square root of 1,200. Well, let's see, that's 400 times 3. So that's 20 square root of 3. So plus or minus 20 square root of 3. Okay, because that's 400 times 3. And the square root of 400 is 20. The square root of 3 I'm stuck with. 
All right. And then the decimal approximation for that would be helpful. And the decimal approximation is about 34.6. All right, so we're ready. Let's go ahead and get the whole thing graphed. So you know you have a y-intercept at 0, 0. You have one x-intercept over here at 34.6. You have another one over here at negative 34.6. Okay. You know at negative 20 with a 5,000, so we'll negative 20 with a positive 5,000, so somewhere way up here. And then over here at positive 20, negative 5,000, you have here is a max, and here is your min, okay? All right, then we know the end behavior has to be like this. We also know a lot about the concavity, so it has to cross It has to go across here, hit that, turn back around because now it's got to be decreasing all the way until you get to 20. But at 0, 0, we had an inflection point. So right there at 0, 0, it's going to change to concave up. See that? Then we're going to hit 34.6 and keep going. All right, and see what happens this high and this low. This one's at 20 negative 5,333 and a third. This one's at positive 20. I mean, negative 20, positive 5,333 and a third. Okay. All right, and then see that? So this has some symmetry. This has origin symmetry. So that's what the symmetry can tell you. And then sometimes that can save you um, some graphing. So if you know it as origin symmetry, you might be able to find just a piece of it, and then you can just use the symmetry to get the rest. All right, so that's example two from the sheet.